Welcome to Chasing a Murder. Today we're going to start off with a news conference attached to that fugitive in PA. This is about that guy from Brazil that goes by Kyle Gante. He was actually being sentenced for a very egregious murder of his girlfriend. Not only had he killed his girlfriend, Deb, he did it in front of her two small children and stabbed her. He didn't just stab her once, twice, or even 15 times. He stabbed her over and over and over a total of 38 times. A severe overkill. He was about to serve his life prison sentence. When he escaped the PA prison, Calvicante was on the run for 14 days. But late last night, his luck ran out and they were able to capture him and bring him back. Thank you, Governor. I would like to make a few brief comments. I, I'd like to dedicate those comments to the victims of Cavalcante and their families. At the end of the day, all the people behind me here work for justice and for the victims. And uh, talk to all of you about uh, bringing this manhunt to a successful conclusion and without getting anyone else hurt, most importantly. None of this would be possible without the support of this team, represented by uh, members of various agencies standing with us up here, by others standing throughout this fire hall, and by still more who are out. First, we, uh, we had a uh, burglar alarm at a residence near Prizer Road within the perimeter. Uh, our people investigated that, did not, uh, did not find Cavalcante there or anyone else to bring some of our people into that area. Uh, we had been searching an area not far from there already with some tactical teams that night. There was uh, an aircraft overhead utilizing uh, FLIR technology and uh, close to 1 a.m. picked up a heat signal that they began to track it was west of PA 100 and north of Prizer Road. Tactical teams began to converge on that location where the heat source was moving. Uh, unfortunately, we had a weather system that also came in and we had lightning that was flashing all around and it caused the aircraft to have to depart the area. Tactical teams made a decision to uh, secure that area, that smaller area, as best they could and hold it through the storm and until uh, we could bring additional resources in and bring aircraft back overhead to ensure that we did not have uh, an issue with an escape. That resumed early this morning and shortly after 8 a.m., tactical teams converged on the area where the uh, heat source was they were able to move in very quietly. They had the element of surprise. Cavalcante did not realize he was surrounded until that had occurred. That did not stop him from trying to escape. He began to crawl through thick underbrush, taking his rifle with him as he went. One of the Customs and Border Control teams, Bortac, uh, had a dog with them. They released the dog. Some of our PSP CERT members were also there, had him surrounded. The dog sub subdued him, and team members from both of those teams immediately moved in. He continued to resist, but was uh, forcibly taken into custody. No one was injured as a result of that. Excuse me. He did sustain uh, a minor bite wound. Uh, we had uh, medical uh, personnel at the scene, and they, uh, they took a look at that. Cavalcante was, as I said, taken into custody. He was transported to our Avondale station for further processing and interview, and he will ultimately be transferred to a state correctional institute where he will be housed and begin to serve his life sentence. In just a few minutes, I'll open this up to some questions, but I, uh, before I do that, I want to turn this over to one of our, our very close partners, District Attorney Deb Ryan. I know she would like to say a few words. And again, then we'll be happy to take your questions following that. 
Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Bivens. Today is a great day here in Chester County. Our nightmare is finally over and the good guys won. We owe a debt of gratitude to all of the first responders for their tireless and dedicated efforts in bringing this fugitive to justice. They worked around the clock and we are deeply grateful to all of them. Our community can finally regain its normalcy and breathe a collective sigh of relief. So they have been watching them since last night. Basically, they had an idea of what perimeters to set up. And right here, you can see they have caught him and they are setting up for a photo opportunity. They take several photos here before escorting him to the truck to take him back into custody. When Cavacante actually escaped the prison, they were putting a lot of blame onto the tower, but the truth of the matter is, it seems to me, they've had problems with the past, the recent past of employees escape, well, prisoners escaping. In fact, that guard was able to actually report that he was witnessing an inmate escape the prison. He was captured quickly and easily, but when uh, Calicante on August 31st, around 8.33 a.m. that morning, was out in the exercise yard, he crab crawled his way to the roof into an un a less secure area and made his way to freedom. This is an area that the prison has known has been weak for a long time and decided to push all the blame onto the uh, tower guard. So I'm not certain if that was the correct thing to do, but hopefully this is investigated and the truth comes out. So for those of you just catching the story, Cavacante has actually murdered someone back in Brazil, escaped those authorities, come to the United States, where he was convicted of first-degree murder on August 16th for fatally stabbing his former, former girlfriend, Deborah. We've heard that his sister was arrested and there is talk of deportation for her. A lot of people wondering what that is about. Well, just recently, his mom come out after several interviews with the, you know, Calicante's mom. This interview, one of them being with the New York Times on Tuesday, she was basically an enabler for her son defending his murderous actions against his girlfriend, blaming his girlfriend for what happened that day. Now, we've heard that the reason that he killed her was because she threatened to tell the police that he was wanted in Brazil for murder. And his mom was saying, you know, yes, my son basically killed her, but there's a reason. She said, quote, did it happen? It happened. But it happened because of the stranglehold that she put on him, the stance she took with him. It wasn't femicide. He had to. He had no other choice, end quote. Okay, this is beyond ridiculous. Even if Deborah had put her son in a stranglehold, Stabbing her 38 times is not the solution. So now you can see where his great upbringing comes from, where his ideas come from, and how he believes that he's privileged and holds no value of life whatsoever for anyone else. You make up lame excuses to give yourself the credit and the pat on the back that what you did was honorable. What a pathetic mother that is. But she's not alone in being in this list of pathetic parents. You had, remember, Brian Laundrie. His parents helping him along after he murdered his girlfriend. Interestingly, at first, Calavante's mom wasn't so much enticing her son to continue with his awful decisions. But as the manhunt went on, she started becoming more and more outspoken and even saying 
that her son would be better off dead than arrested. So let's pause a second here. In this footage, you can see where they're cutting off his shirt and they're preparing to take him back into custody. Televante's mother's concern was not for the children who lost the mother, the mother who was stabbed overkill 38 times. She was concerned about her son's suffering in jail. She said, quote, if it's to go to the place to suffer and die in that place, it's better to die soon, end quote. According to the New York Times, this is a 180 degree change in her message to, to the public about her son. In the beginning, she was asking her son to give himself up. So what changed her mind? Most likely seeing her daughter arrested, her son on a run, most likely triggered some anger she held deep inside. So you can see where her son gets these drastic um, acts that are based off anger, where you live in the moment, and it's quite aggressive. Definitely, Calabante kept the, you know, all the investigators on their toes. They were having to recheck their perimeters, change them up. As a lot of the time, they were probably expecting that he would want to get out of the area, but that's not what he did. He actually just kept circling and backtracking a bit. So when they caught him this morning, I think it was a bit surprising to them that they were able to finally pinpoint where he was, bring him to justice, and to get the danger off the streets. Now, police were also having a tough time because you had a lot of other people out there uh, joining in the search that were not part of the search group. For them, uh, the police were trying to set things up, and they felt as though those people were kind of messing up their plans. In fact, there were a lot of lives that a lot of people were watching of people driving in the area kind of on the lookout for this guy. There were over 500 law enforcement officers, including the Pennsylvania State Police, the FBI, ATF, and U.S. Marshals, all searching for this guy. And it was quite a challenge, but they did it. I was starting to wonder if they were going to be able to capture him, but there was talk last night, well, late last night or early morning, that there was a sighting. So um, Rachel let us know that. Thanks, Rachel, for letting us know that. And she had guessed that he would probably start moving around 8 o'clock. That's when they started hearing, you know, possibilities of sightings or movement. How about that, Rachel? I gave you a shout out. Okay, let me give you a little bit of update here. So Calavante was apprehended around 8 a.m. after a heat signal was located west of Pennsylvania, Route 100, north of Prizer Road at 1 a.m. The true hero in this was the, um, the dog. So Calavante tried to escape by crawling through thick underbrush with a rifle that he had stole from a homeowner um, earlier, well, just a few days ago, really. And a search dog was released, and he subdued the guy. This fugitive did get a minor dog bite. Of course, they're saying that Calavante did not come with them without a fight. He was forcibly taken into custody. And we can see earlier, they were taking a lot of photos um, with the guy, posing for photos. Not certain what that's about, but they seem to be quite proud of this mission they accomplished. What was interesting is Calavante had somewhere or at some time was able to acquire a Philadelphia Eagles sweatshirt. So he got a change of clothes. Most likely that was a way to not only keep him warm, but to also change his scent. I want to send out a shout out to those who were involved with capturing this guy, including uh, YouTubers, media, law enforcement, FBI, all of them. A National Guard, whoever was involved, for your time and effort and trying to keep the community safe. Um, guys, please take a moment to share these faces that I'm showing you right here. Faces like Dulce, Jasmine Robinson, these girls, they still have no answers and their families are just hoping every day that maybe they can find out where their loved ones are. Hopefully they do. Share your thoughts on Calavante below. I love you guys and I'll see you guys soon.